Just look at that beautiful cover. Welcome to your doom bag. <laughs> the cover and the title are ridiculously made to be like that. I'm like, it's on purpose, but... I mean, if you're really that fucking stupid... Hey, what's this? Is that my stupid phone ringing? It was before junior year, and my hard drive took a shit. I had Crank Part 2 on there, which I worked so damn hard on, and pfft, that went the hell. I also had video footage of Anthony throwing a temper tantrum like a fucking two-year-old. And at the time, you know, Anthony was a cool guy, man. He got laid. He got paid. You know, he does drugs. He parties all the time. He has a kid, and what did I got? I got nothing. I'm a fucking loser. I'm a piece of shit, brother. He's the cool guy. And by releasing that video, which I was about to fucking do, he was going to be exposed, and I was going to be the winner. Let's see. I had lunch with Bruce. I had a foods class. And I had a photography class with Michael. Fuck it. I might as well just explain all the ridiculous shit that happened. Mostly because of you. You're just bonkers. This is the only time I've ever seen her in a miniskirt. Or a skirt in general. And uh, we were talking and stuff. And next thing you know, she's like, hey, you want to see something cool? I'm like, oh, okay. She gets up, walks a little bit, turns around, and then she bends over and I get hit in the head. I'm like, what the fuck was that? And it was a bloody tampon on the ground. And then she's looking right at me and she said, is that like the coolest thing you ever seen? And I'm like, uh, that was fucking stupid. You're fucking stupid. And then she didn't talk to me for the rest of the day. That was the coolest fucking thing I ever seen. She was talking about this abusive lover she's got. And I was like, okay, just dump the guy. I start seeing this cute blonde just fixing her wedgies and rubbing her back and holding her hand. I'm like, okay, maybe they're just fucking friends or some shit. Uh, come to figure out that they're gay. That's her lover. I caught those two making out in the hallway all by themselves, and uh, Rachel had this look on her face like, oh shit. The next day, I got bitched and yelled at by her uh, friend. What an asshole. Then she was showing off her lingerie on her phone. She's like, this is what I look like in this, this is what I look like in that. I'm like, I don't fucking care. She didn't talk to me for the rest of the day, and again, she uh, tells me that she still wets the bed, and I'm like, that's actually fucking disgusting. And again, didn't talk to me for the rest of the day. God, she gets really pissy, you know? All that was bullshit. But I did think she was a complete asshole at first. Just a total piece of shit. And then uh, after a while, she became likable. She was playful as hell. Like, she was the kind of person that would pick on you for saying the wrong word. She did that to me once. I said the word roll wrong, and she's like, roll? I said, yeah, roll. And she's like, roll. I'm like, no, roll. And then for the next, like, two minutes, she would pick on me for saying the word wrong. We were fucking around with these pantyhose and a canister. And then she's like, dude, put that over your head. So I put it over my head. And literally everyone is laughing. And then she's having a hell of a time with it. And then the teacher's like, what are you, six? Take that off. That's funny. And she's like, what's his problem? He's a faggot. Shit started to hit the fan as soon as I realized that it, there's there's no way I can possibly even keep a relationship with her permanently because I have nothing. I have absolutely nothing to go to. I have no money. I have no vehicle. I have no hideout. I got no fucking cronies. You know, I got no escape. Michael was always fucking busy with his girlfriend. Bruce didn't really help much, and Isaiah was just a fucking prick. Yeah, and I remember talking to Bruce, and I thought it was never going to fucking work the way it did, but all I said was, you know what, Rachel's a good fuck. You know, he told somebody, that somebody told Anthony, and then Anthony told Rachel, and he's like, uh, hey, my brother likes, you know, like, jerking off your online photos and shit. That was the worst thing you could probably say, but... Guess what, dude? It helped me out big time. Add fuel to the fire. And then Josh, the warrior, came up and he's like, Uh, hey man, what the fuck? What's going on here? And then she's like, Oh, Josh, what the fuck, man? Yeah. And then I had to see it. And she wasn't very in a good mood at all. She was in a total shitty mood. Fuck it, dude. This is getting depressing. So I literally gave her a chance. Not really much a chance just to feel her out and... and at first she's all, like, shy and shit. And then after I... Start talking for a couple more minutes. She started to warm up again. She's all giggling shit, and then she just speed walks away because now she's all nervous and 
happy again. And she sat by the table for the next two weeks, wondering when I'm going to make my move or something, or say something. I could have literally just made a move on her, and it would have been done and over right there, but that's not the point. I mean, from here, I pretty much gave up on that idea now, and just wanted to get the fuck out. I just had an angry look on my face. And uh, that drove her away after two weeks. Anthony came up with the idea of the shit in the dryer. I wanted to get expelled, not thrown into prison. Plus, I like the way she looks, so no, that wasn't going to fucking happen. But anyways, when people started to figure out I was going to do it, they were telling me exactly where she lives. And uh, naturally, I figured out where she lived because, first of all, I take the road that she lives on. Second of all, her fucking mailbox is plastered with her last name. Anyways, out comes this car and... They're going down the road, and of course I'm playing a role here, so I gave the car a middle finger just to figure out that it was her mother. And then when Rachel heard about it, she told Josh uh, that she shouldn't come, and he's like, uh, why? And she's like, uh, because I don't want her to get caught. Aww. Yeah, I knew she's telling the truth, but it made it easier for me to get pissed off at her because she's not fucking telling me this to my face, so... Let's see, what happened after that? Oh, and then I had a full bag of dookie. I had a cock of dookie. Fucking dog turds and turds and turds and whatever turds I could pick up off the ground in a baggie. And this shit was fucking soggy and wet. And I threw it in the locker and literally everybody was like, Oh, damn, that fucking that damn. And then uh, my locker got sprayed down and... Uh, then uh, Rachel figured out that it had something to do with me, so she, of course, had a grumpy look on her face. Fuck, it was depressing. Every time I had a look at her, it was... You know, I smear shit in a locker, I'll be golden, and I couldn't bring myself to do it. Then I decided, well, fuck it, I have to piss her off through some other means. Butt Pirates was fucking lame. That was pretty much me doing Swab the Deck. <laughs> swab my deck. Spanish one was my de facto video. It was the one... To seriously fucking piss her off. Spanish one was a retarded, boring ass reference haven video. It was it's just like my other videos that I released that year. That, well, most of them. Oh, la, la, la. The only part that was remotely funny was when she was talking Terrence and Phillip style. And I wish you had cancer. You are such a dick, Scott. You're a dick. You're a dick. You're a dick. You're a dick. Billy May says his line. And that's it. And then she texts Josh and she's like, I am so mad at him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yell at him. He pissed me off. And, uh, next day I get props from some dudes and, uh, come to art class and there she is waving her phone around and having people look at it and they had the deadest look on their face like, oh, uh, like they don't really give a shit. And then she's looking right at me. And I want her to just fucking snap. She didn't do it. I wanted an excuse to give her a titty twister and get the fuck out, but it didn't happen. So, anyways, let's get on with the story. So, now I'm under the impression she doesn't really give a fuck. Like, I knew she actually give a shit, but play along with me here. And anyways, I'm telling Josh, I'm like, Josh, she doesn't really fucking care at all. Like, seriously, dude. And then, I, s I see her walking by, so I had to, like, do this fake fucking laugh, slapping my knee and shit, and she's walking by all... Grumpy pants and not wanting to fucking say a word. And it ended up happening was the cop came over and then I get a fucking warning ticket. It doesn't mean shit. Which means if I seriously wanted to fucking do anything with her, I could have done it already. I'm trying to literally get kicked out. It's not fucking working. I get harassed. It was Christmas break. It was depressing. It was sad. It sucked. I wish things were totally different. I'm like, oh, god damn it! I just wish. I just fucking wish things were different. And I was thinking about my really great re relationship I had with my girlfriend in Vegas. And I'm like, oh, you know, she always wanted me to cross-dress. You know, fuck it. I'm going to do what she wanted me to do. I'm going to cross-dress. Fucking A. And I haven't cross-dressed from that time in, like, the last, shit, almost seven years. I go to Target, snag, like, three pairs of, uh, not three pairs, but three packs of panties, which... I wouldn't fit two anyways. I'm a size six. And they were size eight, nine, and ten. I get like the biggest bag of maxi pads you can get. It's fucking dual wing. Big diapers pretty much. To put that shit in there too. And then I run in some assholes from school. And I couldn't wait for them to fuck off so I can leave. I get fucking hit. By an old lady. Didn't know what the hell was going on. I don't have to tell the cop anything. I can legally tell him to fuck off. And I'm like, you know, 
I want to get kicked out again. I'm like, fuck it. Fuck it. I just want to get the fuck out of school. And I thought it would be my golden opportunity. Like, this would be it. I would finally get kicked out. And, uh, no, I didn't. Um, what ended up happening was we brought all the shit back to Target, dumped it off. I got to ask questions and shit. And I'm like, I got investigated by, by the same investigator that harassed me the last time investigating I should say and uh, I gave him this really bad perverted reason oh I do this because I want to jerk off in a maxi pad with panties on it and I'm like Pfft. are you fucking kidding me I am so pretty yes I am oh yes I am god look at that butt just look at that thing so good. After that, uh, it was a week before exams, and Bruce thought it would be funny to shave my eyebrows, so, you know, went ahead and let it happen. Nothing happened. Everyone just laughed, but that's about it. And then what got me in trouble, actually, was, ironically, in art, we had to do this thing for the final exam. Like, what do you learn? I put down something along the lines of, I'm going to do something so grand, not even the military is going to figure it out. Wait. Mm. Oh, that was great. They gave me an ultimatum, pretty much, uh, get expelled and get charged probably with felon charges or do therapy and come back. I just took therapy and that was fucking useless. There was a time where I was actually about to give up some point through. I don't remember when, but I I wrote this like little letter and I said, you know, I try to add to make it believable. So I said, Rachel, I used to love you or <sighs> and you broke my heart. Now you're a stupid bitch, I'm done with you. That was pretty much going to be my treaty flag. The whole thing was just depressing and stupid. Not really. I should have just blew a big fart in her face and gave her a wedgie and then get kicked out. That would have been great. You think me at my worst, everybody be at their best, but no. A lot of people were fucking rotten. As far as my friends go, Bruce was a pussy. Isaiah didn't give a shit because obviously he doesn't give two fine fucks about me. Josh, Josh was fucking... Just a douchebag. The only one that was even honest with anything was Michael. I remember when I confessed and he was like, Well, dude, you, what, are you shitting me? If you think this is the first time I'm coming out on camera, uh, no, it's not. I got two videos where I literally show off my panty wearing ass all the time. <laughs> Let's be honest, I am the most beautiful thing this universe has ever seen. I have the ass of a goddess and the cock of a god. You can't resist me and I can't resist myself. I am so damn rich, I'm the Warren Buffett of Dora County. I have my own joint. All the food in the world. Look at this queen size bed. Me and all my daughter. You can sleep on the ground. Look at this big old closet. Nah, you can have this cubby hole right here. I'm not one of those pussies that would. I will. So come, or you be treated like a prisoner. I mean a king, I mean a queen. In all honesty, I don't know if you're ever going to see this video. And even if you do, I really don't care what your opinion is. Good or rotten it is. I don't care if you want to fart in my face or not. I really don't give a shit. Fart in my face. The reason why I made this out of confessing video, uh, feelings is just so... People can't use this against me. But uh, knowing you, you're probably going to try to strangle me. And if we do get into some mega fist fight, it's going to probably look something like this.